beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. I thought it might be good to spend a bit of time vlogging and just talking about recovery on a day-to-day -day basis on maybe things I still struggle a bit with or things I don't anymore and how I dealt with it. It's easy enough to sit and talk about things in hindsight or to do like a food challenge for one day but I thought it might be good to just represent a bit of my life in recovery and what that looks like for me now over three years down the line. Today I had a few like mini wraps for my lunch. My friend and I saw that there was a platter of wraps on a deal like with money off so we just got it and split them and I had like four little ones for lunch and then some grapes and then a couple of the mini galaxy like hazelnut truffle eggs. I did film and eat with me so I'll see if I can put a clip of the food in here. And the reason I wanted to bring it up is because I kind of got a bit of an eating disorder thought that came from nowhere and felt quite convincing for the few seconds that I had it. And that was, I had eaten the wraps, I'd eaten the grapes, I don't know if it was something because I don't like typically eat it, my brain didn't necessarily know, couldn't comprehend how much any of it was because you know it was a whole variation of a few different wraps and I've never had most of them before. I don't know, I don't count calories anymore. Anyway, so I don't really know why that would trigger it but it's just a guess. I haven't counted calories for years and it is amazing, don't get me wrong, but I don't know if it was just because it was something different or whatever, but when I wanted something sweet and I went to get those little eggs that are only like that big to have a few of. When I was picking up the packet to get the eggs out, I looked at the calorie amount and it was so annoying. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, is that worth it? And that was the thought that came into my head. I was like, is it worth having these now? And then I just had to be like, <laughs> where did that come from? And have them anyway. I think that's a lot of the approach in recovery is it's not necessarily your fault if you get the thought, but it is your responsibility not to act on it. That's how I see it. Like, I don't know, I could, I could speculate. I don't necessarily know why today at lunchtime I had that thought around the two little galaxy eggs to have with lunch. I don't know what it was. And I don't know why. I don't know what part of my brain was ignited that made me think that thought, but I can't help it. It's just, it's not voluntary, the thoughts that you have. But I do have control over how I behave, so. I had them anyway. I felt a little bit uncomfortable but it didn't matter and I know now I've like eaten freely for a long time now that I know that that will not impact me whatsoever. It was just one of these almost throwaway thoughts. I don't know. I guess the more you don't act on the less likely they are to show up again. Thoughts like this for me show up very rarely so it shows that that pattern is working but it came up. Yeah I thought I would just like share that with you all to know that I don't do everything perfectly and I'm not fully recovered and people say to me you're fully recovered like you can do all these challenges and I'm like I can and they're like oh you're physically recovered and I'm like yeah and most of the time I probably do live life like I'm recovered and then thoughts like this hit me and I just go oh, right okay and I don't necessarily articulate a lot of the times when those things happen because I think people around me all assume I'm just basically better which is fine because I pretty much am but um, I think it's nice to have a way to still share a little it's never perfect and the unlearning thoughts and feelings and eating disorder stuff is gonna take a long time, like that's okay. And even if I did decide to deem myself fully recovered, I don't think I would then expect that I would never get a thought again because they just happen, but I guess I would, to feel fully recovered, maybe it's not about never getting a thought again, but knowing that, like deep down, knowing that I will never act on a thought again. And right now that doesn't feel that strong to me, it feels as strong as it ever has but it doesn't feel there. So that was me and I will check back in with you whenever something else of interest comes up. Hi! Yesterday was my mum's birthday and my sister made a lemon raspberry cake which she made for my best friend's Hindu and it went down an absolute treat. I didn't try it yet, we got left a few slices because they had to leave so we didn't all have it together and I just cut this into three slices last night and I've got two of my friends coming over later today. And I was thinking we could have them and then I realised that John might want a bit as well so I was like oh we could just figure out a way to split the three into four so we can all get a bit of cake. And something that feels really nice to me now, and this is something I only realised in hindsight hence why I'm telling you it now rather than yesterday at the time, is that there's no part of me that feels good about the fact that I'll probably end up having less of this because two of my friends are coming over and John will have some as well. And equally, I could offer them this. I mean, they had it at the Hindu and it was great, so I doubt they're gonna say no, but they could say no. And then John and I could be left with this. Maybe John doesn't want any, maybe I'll end up having all three slices at some point. Probably not, but you never know. And that's all just fine to me. And back in the day, I think I would have focused so much on having a certain size of slice or who's gonna have what, or I can't have unless other people are having, or 
oh I don't want to have this in my house blah 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 and now it's just so like it's nice it's great to have cake I'll happily have whatever part of it I know that a bit of cake is not going to do anything bad it's food it's nice my sister made it with love for my mum's birthday she's really talented at it and it's all great so looking forward to it and I hope that while I think the example that I used in the last clip was a little bit more of a not a negative one but a little bit more of a an eating disorder driven one one where there's still work to be done and instances like this there's not I'm just finishing up working from home for the day <sighs> Someone sent me something. And there are some days where I will be having dinner on my own at the minute. So if John is at his martial arts class or if he's playing football, if he's playing vibes with his friends, sometimes I get dinner on my own. Sometimes I'll have a snack and wait on him. Today I'm thinking I'm quite hungry. I could do with a meal, so I'm going to make dinner. And I just wanted to basically come on and say that even though I am not eating with anyone, even though the food I'm about to eat will not be recorded or shared with someone else no one else will know what happened I'm still going to nourish myself properly because one of the main things about recovery is that you're doing it for you and you can't trick your own brain and I think a lot of people in recovery will do things in front of someone as a bit of a, like an exhibition they will eat because they know someone is watching but then behind closed doors they won't follow through with that same commitment to recovery and this is just a reminder that that doesn't work and that's probably why if you're not progressing that could be one of the reasons why because it's like you are recovering for you and it's going on in your own brain and if your own brain goes oh, okay we can eat when they're there but not when we're on our own or yeah, yeah yeah we can do this in secret like it's not actually relearning and it's not actually getting better this is a reminder that eating when you are alone nourishing yourself properly having proper portions having the amount of food that you need when you're alone is just especially important as it's actually showing your brain oh, this is what we do now we do not need to restrict we are allowed to eat whatever we want regardless of circumstances and that's why i really recommend it now i'm saying this isn't recorded now it is <laughs> but i did it last night as well and other many other nights i also think it's just a whole part of recovery is learning to trust yourself more and be kind to yourself more and it all comes into that like if you were to eat in a different way when you're on your own it just comes across really self-punishing and harsh and unkind and i'm sure that is not the relationship that you want to have with yourself so this is your reminder to eat to prioritize recovery to have things properly even when you are alone Today is my four year anniversary in recovery. I just filmed a little video of me blowing out the four year candle, which I thought was really cute. And I was just eating a bit of this cake, which was pretty good. It's actually not quite as good as I was expecting. It's kind of dry, but nice enough. So I thought I would just check in while I put all this away. I'm not super funny about anniversaries. They don't feel that different to me. I feel like I get hit by other things a lot more than dates, but it is still nice to Think back. I actually posted a TikTok video recently enough of it was like the COVID sound of Boris Johnson saying like you're gonna need to stay at home or whatever he said and then and then there was like some kind of sad music playing over the top of it and it really got me when I made mine. Now if you know me you know I won't do before and afters eating disorder recovery transformations like um gonna eat this icing <laughs> any photos whatsoever that are showing my body before and after but I have a few photos from when I was really unwell and just starting recovery that are just my face and you can't really see any of my body at all and I, I don't really see a problem with that because I don't think you can compare it to someone's face the uh, only way you can compare it to a face is like with how drained someone looks, how colourless, how maybe lifeless their skin is or something like that like it's not going to be a competitive thing, it's going to be a motivational thing if that's how I see it anyway and hopefully that translates and that got me and obviously that was posted a few days ago from now my anniversary but yeah this anniversary is the important one to me because it's the one that I chose like it's the day I chose to finally commit I had been in treatment for a little bit and in denial and thinking about it and then not thinking about it and then trying to add in extra things and then whatever so it was the 5th of April 2020 that I was like right fine <laughs> I'll commit to it like I believe in it and it wasn't an easy particularly the first year I, I didn't honestly progress loads because I went back and forth but 
So, I mean, it's hard for me to say that I've been in a solid recovery for four years because that's not true, but the 5th of April 2020 was the first day that I finally actually committed. I think it's always nice to acknowledge anniversaries and to feel proud of your progress and who you are and how different you are. And I think as well, that was the thing with the two pictures of my face. Now, granted, in the first photo, I was like, if I was wearing makeup, it was minimal. It was like a bit of mascara. And in the second photo, I'm dolled up for a night out. So there's also that comparison, but I look a lot more full of life. Oh better, just happier. I also look older, but not in a bad way, in a lovely way. It just makes me realise how much I've changed in the last four years. Um, and it feels nice to have a little bit of cake. I feel quite far removed from that person, but also not. It's a weird one. I wish I had something slightly more inspirational to say on the matter. To say, I look back and I feel brilliant and it's just, I feel very calm about it all. I just feel like more objective. I'm a different version of myself, she was her, I'm me, this has been my journey, this is what's happened. I didn't always make the right decisions, I still don't, I'm not a perfect person and I'm not trying to be. In 2022 I decided to start documenting it on TikTok and now YouTube and I've got other things on the go, I don't know if I've announced that yet but it feels nice, it feels really good. I mean I've, I know this is what I'm passionate about talking about. I believe that I help people or hope I do and I believe that I can. And I want to keep doing that and when things come up in my day-to-day -day corporate 9 to 5 job it's fine but it's not what I'm passionate about I don't really care <laughs> and well I, I mean I care in the moment that's not true but it's just not something that actually fills me up it's something I do I do it well I enjoy it I enjoy progressing in my career I like my colleagues I like my company but it's not what I'm I feel meant to do and this is so for you watching this right now, thank you for your support. Whether this is the first video of mine you've seen or the hundredth, um, I'm really glad you're here. People watching my stuff is the reason that I'm able to do this. It's not my job, I still have a full-time job, but maybe one day something like this could be. And I would love the chance to steer my career into helping people through experiences like what I've had in a realistic yet encouraging practical way. I think the reason I feel a little deflated, to be honest with you, not deflated, that's a strong word, but the reason I don't think I just feel totally elated and proud and whatever is just because there's still a part of me that is the person from four years ago. There's still a part of me that understands her fears. There's a part of me that sometimes looks back on that version of myself with rose-tinted goggles and then I can rationalise myself away from it. Looking back feels funny to me because it's just such a conflict of everything. I know my hair's a bit crazy. It's still quite wet, but... I just had a little food freedom moment that I thought might be interesting to hear. So normally for my breakfast, like most days I'd say I would have a bagel with peanut butter and banana. It's my thing. I just like it. It's like my low maintenance, don't need to think it through type of breakfast. And this morning I was like, oh, I don't really want peanut butter. I could go with some, just some butter on a bagel. I feel like that would be nice. And then my brain went, ooh, I could do butter and banana and honey. And I was like, oh yeah, that'll bang. Um, and that's what I've got. Which might sound like a weird combination, but trust me. And um, it occurred to me as I was making it that it's not that a bagel with just butter would necessarily be restrictive if it's what I was wanting, but I can add to things and just feel happy about it and excited about that and being like, oh yeah, that'll be even better. And it's ways of adding in additional things to make sure that what I'm having definitely is nourishing me and is enough, but in a way that still allows me to pick what I'm actually craving, you know what I mean? Mm. Not wanting peanut butter doesn't mean I eat less, it just means I eat something different. And I mean, there will be moments in recovery where you won't know for certain, or there will be moments where you're like, oh, is what I'm picking genuinely what I want, or is it restrictive, and maybe this is a good thing to do. In some instances it won't apply to all, but in some instances where you can just turn around and go, oh my god, this is tripping on. You can just turn around and go, okay, well, just to make sure that it's not restrictive, what can I add so that I'm still going by my craving, but I'm making sure it's not less. It's so like when people say to me, um, what if I just like the lower calorie version of something? It's like, okay, well, you're allowed to go with your preferences, but would you be annoyed if something was added to that? And then it's like, okay, maybe there's something to work on there. Or would you be annoyed if it was the same calorie or food content amount same calorie amount or content, ingredients, whatever, as the alternative. 
and again if no we need to work through that like I had that I, I used to think I preferred low fat Greek yogurt because the first time I tried full fat Greek yogurt I was like tastes like cheese <laughs> I was like this is really thick I'm not sure I'm a fan but I used to just say that I preferred low fat Greek yogurt but I think if you asked me genuinely at the time when I used to believe that would you be okay if it had the same fat and calorie content as full, crack, full fat Greek yogurt would you still pick it I don't think my answer would have been yes and so when I learned that I was like okay well that's fine now I just buy full fat Greek yogurt and in the beginning I didn't think I liked it but now I really do and now I don't think I could go back to the lower fat one I think it was just a process of getting used to it I, it felt too creamy initially but I had it a few times and I was like actually it's nice and now I wouldn't buy anything else because I know for me picking a lower fat Greek yogurt was a restrictive choice but with something like Pepsi Max I'm like okay I prefer Pepsi Max to like a full fat Pepsi or a full fat Coke like I prefer Diet Coke to regular Coke but if you said to me, would you still have a Diet Coke if it had the calories of a regular Coke? Like, yeah, I just prefer the taste. And I think I show myself that because when I buy Dr. Pepper, I don't buy the Zero. When I buy Fanta, I don't know if there is a Fanta Zero, but I prefer the full fat versions of those things. Well, I've never tried the lower fat Fanta to be fair, but I've tried the lower fat um, Dr. Pepper. But like, I'm used to having full fat drinks. If the only option was a full fat Coca-Cola, I would still have it. And if the Diet Coke had the same calories as the normal Coke, I'd be fine with it. But then in other instances, I wasn't, so I knew that was my own boundary. So my advice being, if in doubt and you are not sure if something is restrictive, you're not sure if you feel good about having less, just add to it and see how it feels. If you're recovering from restriction, it's always good to just be on the safer side. Hi everyone, I just wanted to come on to say thanks very much for watching the video. I really hope that you enjoyed this kind of vlog recovery in the lifestyle let me know if you did and if you want to see this type of video again maybe it's kind of nice to see a bit of behind the scenes and what recovery in action looks like for me i hope you enjoyed it love you lots and i'll see you next time bye